Believe it or not, we're almost halfway through the decade already. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I got a little tier list ranking of all the comic book movies of the decade so far. This spans from Marvel to the DCEU, from live action to animated. So I've got about 24 or so films on this list, but before I dive into it, be sure to hit that like button, it helps out more than you guys know. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. I mean a lot of them so close to making that final push. And if you like this video and wanna see a full on panel with myself and other movie YouTubers talking comic book films, next week, you can do that at Megacon February 1st through 4th. I will be there all four days, being on some panels with fellow YouTubers, talking movies, Stranger Things, and Megacon is in Orlando, Florida, so I hope to see some of you guys down there. It's going to be a blast. Without further ado, let's dive into this tier list. All right, so the tiers I have are pretty standard. S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, and F tier, and trust me, there's going to be some stinkers and some absolute winners, but these are fully randomized. Starting off, we've got Black Widow. This is the first MCU film since 2019. We have that gap year in 2020. And to me, like in the big picture, I'm going to put this in C tier. I enjoy it more than most people. I was a big defender of this film when it came out, especially because of the relationship between Yelena and Red Guardian, but also Yelena and Nat. That sisterhood relationship, as well as the whole family dynamic in this film, is really the strong suit for me. It's what I equate to a feel-good film. Is it perfect? No. It has some of the worst MCU villains, point blank, period. I can't stand Drake off. Taskmaster was wasted in this movie, but there's no denying there's a bit of a feel-good element to this one, so I enjoyed it, and to me, it's kind of an homage to some of the Phase 1 MCU films. Perfect. Far from it, but way better than some of the stuff we've gotten recently. Moving on, though, we've got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This movie was bad, guys. Um, it's it's kind of sad the DCEU went out with the whimper, but also fitting because a lot of this entire franchise was just one big letdown or, oh, here we go again. I'm putting this in D tier. I don't think it's, like, outright awful, but there's not a lot of redeeming qualities. The standouts on this poster right here, you got Patrick Wilson and Jason Momoa and their chemistry, but other than that, the movie's pretty bad. I haven't thought about it since I saw it in December, and I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. To be honest with you, I'm not gonna watch this movie ever again. Who am I kidding? Moving on, though, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We got our first S tier of the stream. I'm putting it up here. Well, this isn't a stream, this is a tier list, but you get what I'm saying. Guardians 3, beautiful send-off to this group of characters. James Gunn, you did it. Hats off to you, hopefully you go crush it with DC because this movie will make you laugh, it'll make you cry, it'll make you listen to the soundtrack on loop, and it's crazy we're coming up on one year since it's been out. Moving on though, we've got Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Another one of those forgettable DCEU films. Like, there were two or three last year where I watched them and I was like, that wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, that was alright, that was entertaining. And then about a week passed, and then a month passed, and then a few months passed, and I was like, oh, I just don't care, and I thought more about it and how it ended, and <sighs> this movie's not good, guys. It's going in D tier. Um, I don't know if it's outright F, but D tier feels appropriate because it does have its enjoyable moments. Rachel Zegler shines. I think, you know, th there's <laughs> there's not a lot of good to say here. Moving on, we got Spider-Man No Way Home, another S tier movie. And as it stands right now, I'm going top of S tier with No Way Home. I know that there's, you know, divisiveness online regarding this film, and I don't understand that. To me, the complaints with Spider-Man No Way Home come from the same crowd of people who like to just tear down the most popular things to be different or have some pushback. In my opinion, Spider-Man No Way Home is the premier Spider-Man film. It gave us all three live-action Spider-Man together. Sure, you could argue it was fan service but it, but it fit within the narrative. Uh, Tom Holland's Peter Parker has gone through the ringer. He's at his lowest of lows, and then Toby and Andrew's Peter Parker come in, and they relate to him, and they tell him, you know, it's gonna get better. With great power comes great responsibility and together they sort of bond and they get through these tough times. So to me, it's a beautiful movie and um, I could watch it any day. So it's going top of S here. It's special in my mind. Then we've got James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. This is the best DCEU film. And so because of that, I feel like it deserves a spot in S tier, but I don't give it five out of five. So I'm actually gonna put it at the top of A tier. It is the creme de la creme <laughs> of the DCEU because James Gunn got to have his creative vision fully sought out. I mean, you got Peacemaker in here, Idris Elba is Bloodsport, you've got Margot Robbie, Rick Flagg's the best we've seen him. This movie is the only Suicide Squad film that I acknowledge. Yeah, it's just another win for James Gunn, what's new? Next we have DC's League of Super Pets. Uh, I'm gonna put this in D tier. I wasn't crazy about this one. I'd probably watch it over these two just because it's a lighter watch and easier to consume, but 
I remember just checking out in the theater, dozing off, being like, oh, is this thing over yet? Sure, it probably landed with a target market of like five to seven to eight year olds, maybe 10 year olds, but I was not feeling it. But I am very aware this isn't a movie really made for me. Next, we have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I'm gonna put this in A tier right behind the Suicide Squad. This was a breath of fresh air when it came out in the MCU because it gave us some badass hand-to-hand -hand combat. It showed us the fantasy side of the MCU with Talo, and it felt so unique at the time. Now, I haven't gone back and watched this one in a bit, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually saw it three times in theaters and was like, hell yeah, to Shang-Chi. So it's like a strong four and a half out of five to me. One of the better films in recent memory the MCU's put out. I really want to see this character again, though. We haven't gotten any news on that. It's weird they haven't got the ball rolling on the next project. I would love to see more Shang-Chi, and I think the people would as well. Despite the film coming out during the pandemic, it still did pretty well. Yeah, I'm down for more of that character. We need it, in my opinion. I don't know what the MCU's doing. He's clearly one of the standouts of the newer characters so far. Moving on, though, we've got the Batman. <sighs> This is such a tough call for me because the two movies I have up there right now are five out of five. So the Batman's a five out of five. How do I place them? I think in my heart of hearts, I gotta have No Way Home at the top of that list because it is the ultimate Spider-Man film. Guardians 3 is such a beautiful send off, but I think I go split the difference and I put the Batman in the middle. It's another one of those movies I saw three times in theaters. Michael Giacchino's score never escaped my mind, and the movie just fully captivated me from the start. It's something I'd been clamoring for as a fan of Batman. I played the Arkham games growing up, and I loved how we got to go detective Batman mode and solve these different cases and mysteries, and this movie was three hours of that masterfully directed by Matt Reeves. Like, the cast across the board's pitch perfect. It's also surprisingly comedic. Like, there are some great lines between Gordon, who's played wonderfully by Jeffrey Wright, and Batman. So, uh, this is the Batman movie to me, as the title would sort of insinuate. The Batman is THE Batman. Next, we've got Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This movie rules. Now, I'm gonna put it at the top of A tier. I'm not gonna put it in S tier, but I think after a few more watches, it could easily make its way up into the God tier level. But Across the Spider-Verse, one of the best films of 2023, really honestly left me wanting so much more, but that's all right because I know we're getting beyond the Spider-Verse. Gorgeously animated. I think it was robbed of an original score nomination at this year's Oscars. Gwen Stacy was the MVP in my opinion, but Miles as well. Both of them have these wonderful arcs, and we're going to see Miles fulfilled in the next film. Gwen has taken on that leadership role by the end of this movie, and I can't wait for Beyond. Next we have Venom. Let there be carnage. <laughs> Uh, look, this is an F-tier movie, in my opinion. I barely remember it, and for that reason, it's going in F-tier. I saw it in theaters, and the best part was the post credit scene, where we're like, oh my god, Venom! Uh, Tom Hardy's Venom's gonna face off against Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and then they went nowhere with that. Uh, so yeah, this movie is, what, an hour and a half? Borderline unwatchable, in my opinion. I was really just not interested at all. Moving on, we got The Flash. I know this is a hot take, but it's an F-tier movie to me. It's uh, it's garbage. Now, I know it has Michael Keaton's Batman, and that is sort of a saving grace, if you will, but the whole entire movie turns into a disaster in the third act. Like, the last 45 minutes are unwatchable in the sense that, like, you will get a headache or just have no clue what you're even looking at on screen. It becomes this nonsensical CGI mess. Like, everything was thrown up into a blender. It was honestly hard to watch, and the plot just goes off the rails, too. I was on board with the setup. It was sort of a Back to the Future-esque plotline with Michael Keaton's Batman in the picture, but man, did this movie fall off hard for me. I was unable to emotionally resonate with anything going on, and it just didn't even make sense in the end. Like, it was supposed to answer a lot of questions about the future of DC as a whole entire universe, and I left more confused than anything. Damn shame, um, but wow, what a miss this movie was. I'll never forget, too, like, months before how hyped up it was by people online who saw it early. What a joke that was. Next, we got Black Adam. Unfortunately, we've hit a bit of a cold streak here. I gotta put this in the F tier. This movie stunk. Uh, I'd say it's actually the worst on this list. I don't know. Yeah, it's the worst on this list so far. Black Adam is headache-inducing. It's just The Rock being so one-note the entire time, showing no emotion. Each line is like him trying to out-cool himself with these one-liners, and it just never hit. The entire movie turns into just loud music and people flying and fighting, smashing into buildings. It's plotless damn near and um, super forgettable. I can't believe... Henry Cavill showed up in the post credit scene. That was the best part of the movie, and um, it's going nowhere now. Next, we got Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'll put this in the B tier. I enjoyed the movie. I think it did the best it could at continuing Chadwick Boseman's legacy in the role. You can't replace Chadwick Boseman, it goes without saying. I mean, rest in peace, truly, he was T'Challa, and you can't replace that. So, inherently, this movie had a tough task. Exploring the aftermath of Wakanda and, you know, Shuri, everyone's role, after T'Challa's passing hit emotionally. And that was sort of the core of this film, but it did have a lot going on. You had the Namor storyline with subplots. You had Everett 
Everett Ross's role in the film, and so at times it felt a little unfocused in my opinion. Though it still had those highlight moments, you know, the score hit almost as hard as the first, you also have Ironheart in the picture, and while she was probably my favorite part of the movie, there was her entire storyline too, so the movie could get a little jumbled. It's a overall solid watch. Next we have Eternals. <laughs> really love the world they try and set up here and the characters, but it's not meant for a two and a half hour movie. It's almost too ambitious for its own good. It goes really grand in scale and to a fault. There's like 11 characters we're supposed to latch on to and it's just almost impossible to really tell a coherent story with this much going on in such a short amount of runtime. I'll put it in C tier. I actually think I watch Black Widow over it and prefer Black Widow as a movie. So Eternals, you know, I hope we see some of them come back, but that's not looking like it's ever gonna happen. Next we got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Super disappointed with this one. I don't think it's an F tier movie necessarily, but I would go D tier, probably at the top. Uh, the Illuminati scene alone puts it over everything else in D tier, but man did I want to love this movie and I walked out super, super bummed out because it didn't know what it wanted to be. Did it want to be a sequel to WandaVision or just a straight up Scarlet Witch movie? Did it want to be a second Doctor Strange movie or this movie that sets up the multiverse and Illuminati? Way too messy in my opinion. I can appreciate Sam Raimi's direction and the vision that he has. Even some of the performances I dug, but this movie is just missed opportunity after missed opportunity and super all over the place. It should have just been Strange's movie and then they could have done another Wanda project. That's my two cents on the matter. Next we had Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. I am sort of a defender of this movie, it seems. I would go at the top of C tier, arguably. Um, you know, I thought the movie was fun, and I'm aware it's flawed, but I thought Kang had that threatening screen presence as a villain, and they set him up really well. Scott and Cassie's relationship was sort of the appeal here, that father-daughter relationship throughout the movie, and over the course of the film, Scott realizing that he needs to stop being all about himself and care more about his family a bit. So, I don't know. People really over-hate on this one, in my opinion. It is far from perfect, trust me. But I've only seen it the once, and I enjoyed my time quite a bit, so I'll have to revisit it and see if it holds up, but I'm kind of scared to do that now. Next we got Morbius. Funnily enough, I think I would watch this over these two DC films just for the memes. <laughs> but it's bad. It's bad, guys. And um, I don't know what Sony is doing because it seems like they have two more Morbius films on their hands with Craven and Madam Web. It's going to have that Morbius effect where it bombs at the box office and just becomes a walking meme. And I don't know who can change that. Can anyone intervene to stop this from happening? Because it's just going to further set back Sony and any potential of Spider-Man 4 being truly great. So it disgusts me. But uh, buckle up for 2024, we're getting three Sony Marvel films. Next we got Wonder Woman 84, which is garbage. Honestly, I think I would watch The Flash over it just because the simple fact that it has Michael Keaton's Batman. But this movie goes off the rails, Wonder Woman 84. The whole like last 30 minutes, almost 45, you've got this whole wish plot line of people having their wishes granted. It just turns into a disaster, people. Pedro Pascal is in this movie and I bet you forgot about that. There's hardly any action scenes for the first 70 minutes when it was marketed as this big action spectacle. What a disaster, frankly. There's no other way to put it. Next we got Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, it's fine. I do think it's wildly overhyped. It's a much better movie and more coherent than the first theatrical cut, but it's four hours long for no damn good reason. The last 40 minutes of this movie are just straight up post-credit scenes that are leading to nothing. I like the dynamic of the team here more. They definitely make it all make sense and they add more depth to Cyborg, but I can't say I love this one. I would probably go like top of C tier with it, honestly, and I've watched it once when it came out, but I haven't revisited it since then, and that's a sign to me personally. So C tier, you know, it's fine, but I do think it's wildly overhyped. It's watchable and enjoyable for sure, but wildly overhyped. Next we've got The Marvels, another movie that I'm sort of a defender of, surprisingly enough. I'd put it right behind Quantumania, um, actually right over Quantumania. I think they're about equal films to me. What has it over Quantumania though is Amon Vellani's performance as Miss Marvel, and more importantly, the trio. The chemistry between them was a standout to me. I know the movie's messy. The first 20 minutes, it's really struggling to find its footing. It's jumping from person to person, location to location. It was like, whoa, what's going on? I was almost overwhelmed or overstimulated, but I enjoyed it enough. I had some really good laughs, specifically with Kamal Alice family and Nick Fury being with them. Also, I didn't mind the third act showdown. I thought it was a pretty cool fight with the main villain, but I am aware this film is flawed. I do think it's way better than people give it credit for, though. Some people are like, it's the worst MCU movie. I can't get on board with that. Next, we have Blue Beetle, which I wanted to like, trust me, but it's a D-tier movie. And right now, I'd say it's my favorite of the DCEU films from last year, uh, but that's not saying much. I didn't like this movie. It was very cliched, very predictable. From the start, I could tell you everything that was going to happen after the first 10 minutes. The villains are horribly underdeveloped, and the standout here is Shola Maraduena as Jaime Reyes. I'd love to see him return in the role because he was a standout. 
Uh, the movie had some decent enough action scenes, but again, it was super predictable, visually dull in my opinion, and I wanted to love it, but I walked out being like, man, I've seen that movie a million times. Thor Love and Thunder is the worst MCU movie, and frankly, I want to go outright the worst, but I'll be honest, I'd watch it over most of the things down here. I, I gotta put it at the top of F tier because of the Guardians alone. I could watch that one scene with the Guardians and be like, that's enjoyable enough. The rest of these movies behind it, I think are disasters. Thor Love and Thunder is too, don't get me wrong but at least it has the Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, Christian Bale's trying his best. The movie is heavily flawed. Tonally speaking, it's all over the place. It's trying to handle serious subject matter like Jane's cancer and almost morality as a whole, but then you've got one-liner after one-liner missing, screaming goats, and Taika's humor missing the mark. More watchable than the others down there, I guess. They're all garbage if they're enough here. And last but not least, we've got Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. I believe the emancipation of one Harley Quinn was the original title, which is way too long. I'm going top a B tier with this movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's got the Tarantino style in a way. People always throw that around. And I'm like, yeah, I can see that for sure. And Margot Robbie was born to play this role. So Ewan McGregor as well as Black Mask having fun as a villain. It's just a sleek movie, really cool the way they edited it and the way they tell the story. And that breakfast sandwich looks glorious. But yeah, that does it for my ranking of all the comic book films of the decade so far. I might've forgot one or two, and if they weren't on here, I probably haven't seen them. But what is your favorite comic book film of the decade so far? Let me know down below and be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. It means a lot. And I hope to see some of you guys down at Megacon February 1st through 4th. I'll be on panels, doing meet and greets with fellow YouTubers. It's gonna be a blast, so I hope to see you guys there. But thank you guys as always for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys later.